Law enforcement experts issue another 9-11 warning following the improper release of an immigrant linked to terrorism. According to a former U.S. Customs and Border Protection, CBP Chief Mark Morgan, the federal government is more concerned with letting illegal immigrants enter the nation than screening them. Well, imagine that. Guys, you know, I just did this video talking about the 10, almost 10,000 Chinese nationals that came across our border uh, at the very beginning of this fiscal year uh, between uh, 1 October and what, the end of March. And it was like 10,000 Chinese nationals. And they were mostly military age young men. I bet they all, it was nothing. They just happened to come across our border, irrespective of the fact that they had TikTok guiding them to the United States. They had apps from China that directed them through waypoints to help them get here. So this is not directed. There's nothing to this. We can all just roll over and go back to sleep, right? i have warned you about sleeper cells in this country. So following the, a Homeland Security Department watchdog report that in, exposed government incompetence that allowed an illegal immigrant on the terrorist watch list to be released into the country and roam free for almost two weeks before he's apprehended, former law enforcement officials are now warning of a potential terrorist attack, a repeat of 9-11. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, uh, took more than two weeks to apprehend the illegal immigrant who was on the terrorist watch list, list after being released by uh, CBP last year, according to a report issued by the Department of Homeland Security's Office of Inspector General, the OIG. So, guys, uh, we got these agencies that just aren't cooperating here. Uh, the re and it's just like 9-11. The report, which was finished just last week, found that the CBP released the undocumented immigrant in Arizona in April 2012 after apprehending them without providing further information requested by the Federal Bureau of in Investigation's Terrorist Screening Center, that's a TSC, that would have confirmed the migrant was a positive match on the terrorist screening data set. That's their terrorist watch list. So they had this guy on a watch list and they didn't do the right checks. They just let them go and then it took them forever to apprehend them, well, two weeks. Due to challenges transferring documentation while planning to arrest the migrant and obtaining a GPS data while conducting the arrest, so they just didn't do that. The DHS watchdog stated that uh, the illegal immigrant wasn't apprehended until the 6th of May, 2022. Uh, the OIG report, according to former uh, CPB acting commissioner, Mark Morgan, is a huge black eye for the American counterterrorism officers. So, however, he pointed out that under the Biden administration, the Border Patrol agents' duties included processing and releasing illegal aliens as quickly as possible rather than securing the border. So they're in a big hurry to get these guys processed in and released, you know, catch and release. You know, it's kind of the old uh, marking and banning from the old mutual Omaha's wild kingdom. You catch a critter, put a band on it, and let it go, right? Well, they didn't even do that because yeah, there's no GPS or nothing to track them with. I mean, guys, what's going on with our border patrol? Anyway, according to Morgan, Another estimated 1.7 million illegal migrants entered our nation under the Biden administration without being detained by law enforcement. And they may already be a significant number of potential terrorists in the United States from that crap. Imagine that. Really? Hmm. According to, to uh, Scott Nelson, the former deputy director of the FBI, the agency has gotten soft. And the softness emanates from the American emerging culture that says good guys are bad and bad guys are good. Uh, gee, is that news? <laughs> this just seems to be where the administration's going, right? And anyway, he said that the purpose of the terrorist watch list was to stop another 9-11, yet we don't seem to be enforced. It's more important to shoot them in. According to Nelson, the lack of coordination between and among 
government agencies is reminiscent of the circumstances prior to 9-11. Remember, that was a big charge. We didn't have coordination between these agencies. And guess what? We're back in the same boat. The FBI's inabilities to dot the I's and cross the T's was one of the primary factors that slammed us, according to him. Uh, Nelson claimed that as a result, the federal agencies are fostering conditions that would permit another 9-11 to take place. You think, well, I've been talking about so much on here, talking about our, how our infrastructure is at risk, our bridges, our dams. I did a whole special thing on dams. And of course, our power grid, which I talked about just a little bit, right? Uh, what's happened is that we're aiding the cartels and aiding the terrorists and directing them toward another 9-11. Nelson continued, it is extremely sad that all these things are coming together at a time when we need rules and regulations, but we might also need uh, to be implemented fairly and fully, not just politically by some accident. Uh, the idea that the DHS would let terrorists on a watch list go, period, is remarkable because it means that there is a failure to communicate within the DHS. That's what he stated, man. So... Uh, <clears throat> And then the Dobbs come out, you know, Lou Dobbs. He said that uh, uh, these are the same folks that have permitted more than 6 million illegal immigrants into the nation. Nevertheless, that's only an estimate of the number. And he said, let's say of known illegal immigrants that have been crossing the imaginary border. It's alarming that one of the terrorists managed to escape and remained at large for two weeks. And he went on further saying, uh, but the reality is that there are currently anywhere between 10 and 15 million illegal aliens living in our country. Furthermore, we have no knowledge of their identities, histories, or current whereabouts in our country. Unfortunately, the Department of Homeland Security currently only exists as a shell of the agency it once was. So guys, take all this in context. Uh, we need immigrants, we need workers, we need help. I've never had an issue with that. The issue is that we're not, we don't have the border sealed where you can actually screen them properly. Yeah, we get some through, we catch, yeah, we mark and ban them. Like I said, like the old show, if those of you that are old as I am might remember, Mutual Long Hall's Wild Kingdom, marking and banning, you know, kind of thing. We don't even do that. We just kind of, uh, yes, yes, okay, you're here, bye. And we let them in. So that's the ones we apprehend. Lots of them don't get apprehended. Who comes across that border? Now, I think this whole report, though, does miss something big. And, you know, they're talking about this one member of the terrorist watch list. And as, it's as if the terrorist watch list is the be-all, end-all. It's an aid. It helps and it should be used. And apparently it's not being used the way it should. However, Who's to say that there's not a whole lot of individuals? I mean, if you were going to send individuals in the United States that you wanted to do mayhem, you might send a few of your captains who were on the list just to see how many of them you can get through. And I'm sure they get a few of them through, but uh, to help coordinate things on this end. But don't you think that they would primarily prefer to send people who has been trained, but it's not on anybody's watch list? That's what I would expect. I mean, I mean, think about it. If you you got to put yourselves in the shoes of your adversaries and try to think like them in order to figure out what they would do. And so, you know, that's what I would do if I were, and I wouldn't, you know, I'm not on that side. I wouldn't do it and I don't condone this stuff, but I'm just saying if somebody were to do something like this, that's what they would do. They would train a bunch of young men and they would give them objectives and send them here. As you might know, and I've often said that, uh, when the, the, the report came out saying that there was uh, nine critical sub electrical substations in this country if taken out would take down the entire grid. When this was mentioned to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard leader, and his response was, eh, I've already got 20 targeted with sleeper cells in the United States, and that was years ago. How many more today? Who else is target them, targeting them? You know, and we know that they got hackers. So between hackers and people entering this country, there's a lot of mayhem that can be done. Our, our, our infrastructure is extremely vulnerable. It's very distributed. you got long lines of distrib distribution that are vulnerable. And then they come together at these nodes, be it a pumping station, be it a, uh, be it a uh, uh, power substation, be it those uh, the high voltage transformers. I've often warned are so critical and hard to replace, be it... Uh, 
our dams. There's so many focal points, power plants. There's so many focal points that can be taken out all too easy. Of course, there's the rail lines. And we've already seen the disasters that can happen on our rail lines. And as I mentioned before, you can order derailers right off the internet. Yeah, but derail trains are not that expensive. And some of these people apparently are well-funded. And yeah, and even when they come here in the United States, there are programs, our federal government, and also in collusion with our states, and which is probably also funded through our federal government and other, you know, by, by various and sundry agencies, there's a lot of money available to people to put these people up. They get a lot of money per individual. Yet we got veterans in this country that are living homelessly. There's something wrong with this picture. Like I said, I don't have anything against immigration. I don't have anything against get letting people come across that truly need a job and we need help. But I think we need to vet them all. They all need to be vetted very carefully. That's the whole point. They need to be vetted. We need to know who's coming in this country. We ought to know where they're at and what they're doing, just in case some few of them might be up to no good. Now, most, you know, most like say people come from Mexico, most of them are like hard workers. They're good guys. And a lot of them have strong family values. So, but you don't know that they all do. And they're not all coming, as we see, from Mexico or even Central America. Even there's a lot of Central Americans in the same boat. They're some of the best workers you'll find anywhere. And some really good people. I always tell you, there's good people, every race, color, creed, every nationality, every hamlet, city, and village in the world. However, it just takes a few bad apples. But when they're coming across being directed, having tools on TikTok, tell them where to go, how to go. And there's way stations along the way where they get aided and they're directed to them and through them. And then they're, they're using the drug cartels to get them across. And probably the drug cartels are making a lot of money to do this, which they're turning around and using to uh, arm themselves up very nicely. Oh, yeah. That's not a good picture. That's not the way it ought to work. That's not at all the way it ought to work. So we've got real issues. It puts our nation at risk right here at home. That's why I tell you, if we get into war with Iran... North Korea, China, even Russian nationals are coming across. Any of these countries, if we were to get directly in war with them, you can expect these sleeper cells at some point are going to be activated. They're not going to call, they're not going to play their hands, they're not going to show their cards until the last minute when the conflict starts. And then all heck's going to break loose. And we never had a war like this. World War One, World War II, we're always over the across the ponds. It wasn't here, except for the people here. We're buckling their belts and tightening up and you know, uh, a lot of the able-bodied men and women went overseas. You had a lot of ladies here roll up their sleeves and went in the factories and weren't what we call Rosie the Riveters because they produced the items that kept our military moving that enabled us to win some major wars in the past. We don't have that either today, but guys, this is where we're at. We are at critical risk right here at home. And we don't know when something like this might go down, how it might go down, but the tensions we have in the world today are off the charts. We, you know, we just had uh, Iran shooting at a couple more uh, oil tankers. And of course our Navy stopped that, but I should do a separate report on that. But guys, and they already got some in cut, they, they've taken some oil tankers, Iran has. They've got them in custody right now. So they're apprehending stuff and it's like they're kind of aching for a war almost in some fashion it seems and i don't think there's no shortage of that from people on our side either so we've got too many people that seems to want a war we don't need a war but if we have one it's not going to be like anything we've ever seen before especially with all these sleeper cells just laying in wait in this country we know they're here we know that because we've been told that by the people that sent them at least in one instance how many more are there how many more are there? Who all sends them? How many more have they sent? How many more are set up? And they're just coming across them. We're just aiding and abetting it just wide open. So you tell me, is it a good idea just to throw the borders wide open and not have some process and some checks, some legitimate ways? I know people. I know some, uh, an individual from Mexico who'd love to come here and work, but, but that individual is not going to go through any illegal process, not going to go help the drug cartels. And this is a very skilled individual who would bring a, a lot of value here, but they're not going to go through that process. But because there's so many coming across illegally, the uh, system is rigged against anybody 
and, and the shoes this individual is in trying to come across legitimately. That too is wrong. It's also wrong that a lot of other uh, legitimate skilled people who we could sort of use to help us, like we got, you know, after World War II, we got tons of skilled people prior to World War II. A lot of people were fleeing Europe. A lot of our scientists and engineers came from European countries. A lot of the brain power we had that got an industrial revolution moving that helped us to win the war and grow our economy came from overseas. Those people can't hardly get in now. Everything is rigged against them because we got so much immigration coming across illegally. So this thing to be fixed. It seriously needs to be fixed. And unfortunately, there's a lot of politics behind it because I guess somebody thinks it's going to help their party more in the polls. I don't know. Is that the case? Maybe I'm wrong. You tell me. But this needs to be fixed. We need to be able to count for people coming across and we need to vet them just to make sure we're not getting terrorists. And we need some way to figure out who's actually here. I mean, what do you think we get all our drug gangs in this country? We got gangs. What do they do? They don't just sit around and plant roses and grow them in the gardens, do they? Is that what all these drug gangs are doing? Just sitting around and growing roses and pansies and twiddling their thumbs? I don't think so. But who knows? A lot of these sleeper cells, that might be what the sleeper cell members are doing. Just biding their time. Just biding their time. Waiting for that call. Waiting for that activation. Let's hope it don't come. I hope and pray it never happens. But if you know somebody that you, that, that's involved in that, you might ought to report it. I had a uh, coworker who owned a farm. Well, her family had a big farm in Kentucky. Her brothers went out in you know, the backside of the farm and they found across the other property, they saw a group had set up a training camp. And they reported local sheriff and those people were ousted. But you know, a training camp. And there's, you know, there's rumors of these things all the time. That's according to my uh, former work associate. So this kind of stuff is happening, guys. Where is it? Who are they? They want to do this stuff in remote places where they can stay quiet, not be seen. But a lot of them get their training overseas. They come here, they got their training. They're ready. They're just waiting for that call, waiting for that notice. Okay, go do your job. What is their job? It is not a pretty one. Like I said, we're too vulnerable here. Our water systems, our communication systems, our transportation systems, rail, bridges, dams, power, all of that is at risk. So eyes wide open, head on so Be prepared. Get yourself and your family prepared as you can. Learn how to purify and sanitize water. I got a good video on that. Hey, just check my videos out. Learn how to grow your own food. I've done a lot of videos on that. Learn how to identify wild edibles and medicinals. I've covered that in videos. Learn how to get some skills. Go out and go camping. Enjoy yourself at it. I mean, do some things that are enjoyable. And go out, you know, a little target practice is an enjoyable thing too. It's all skill development. Learn how to make a fire. Do a lot of practice on that. It don't just come natural. Uh, and you might find it's more challenging than you would think if you haven't really practiced yourself at it. Can you light a fire with one match reliably? But how long are you going to have matches? You need to learn some other techniques. Get you a flint and steel and practice with it. Play. Oh, yeah, by the way, I got this one from Canadian Prepper. So I would, I would say you might want to go check him out. I got some flint here. And I got this little steel striker right here. You know, or you can just plenty of sources to get that stuff. Uh, you can make your own. I got a forge. I'm going to maybe be making these one day myself. So check that kind of stuff out and uh, get you some seeds. Grow a garden. Check my links. It's still not too late to plant a garden right now, guys. It's a good time. You can grow your uh, summer, late summer. You can grow your summer and your fall vegetables, your fall squash, winter squash, whatever you want to call them. Because I'll last of the winter if you go butternut squash and stuff like that. They last a long time. And, and here in the south, it's a perfect time to plant peas. Just about now. Maybe a little bit later even. So, so check it out. Check out Truly Market in my links below. Thank you all for watching. Head on, eyes wide open and head on a swivel. With that, I'm going to say, Greg out. <laughs>